God, to give your name praise, honor, and glory. Oh God, we worship you. You are holy. You are awesome, Lord God. And we pray you bless the service. Oh God, we pray that you bless the hearers of your word, oh God. Let your word go forth, oh God, and we receive it as good ground in the name of Jesus. And we just praise and praise your name, oh God, in this place.
They are looking to the Word of God. They're looking to what we call the Old Testament and find the Scripture. And verse 3 says this, And when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ should be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a, a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And of course, if you look at Micah chapter 5, I think it is, there's a whole lot more about what, what Christ would do. And, and so, and so but here's the thing that gets me. They knew that Christ was going to come, and they knew that Christ will where he was going to come. Okay? Now you have to understand, these people, they look into the Word of God, and they found out he's supposed to be born in, in Bethlehem. And so, when the wise men from the east, or the Magi, when they come from the east and say, where is he who's born king of the Jews? Where is the Christ? Right? And so they have an idea that Christ is born. In Bethlehem. But instead of going there to find him so they could worship him as well, I'm talking about the chief priests and the scribes now. Right? They're not doing that. They align themselves with Herod. And Herod is going to tell the wise men where Jesus is. And he's going to say, and when you find the young child, come back and tell me where he is so I can worship him as well. Right? Sneaky. He is sneaky, y'all. But guess what? As crafty and sneaky as the devil is, God is wiser and smarter and knows everything. So you know how the story goes, right? The way they find the child. See, do you know that the nativity tip, scene where you have Mary and Joseph and the baby, you may have an angel hanging around, and you have some animals, and you have, and you have the three guys, who look like kings, standing there. That's wrong, y'all. The kings weren't there. By the time they catch up with Jesus, he's a toddler. He's a couple of years old. Okay? And so... So when they, they, they find the child, they find the child, they worship the child, and they give these gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now gold is gold, the most valuable stone. There's gold, you can trade it, you can use it to purchase stuff that makes you, if you have gold, if you have enough gold, you're rich. All right? Frankincense and myrrh are, are, are these, um, these elements off the tree that's used for, for incense. Now, now, people in my day right now, we may not have a lot of value for incense, but there are some religions and some churches where incense is used because they want they want the people of God to have a full experience. We experience, you know, in the old days we experienced church with our ears, but now we experience church with a visual. We, you know, church has become more visual, right? We have we have dancers, we have choreography, we have different things going on, and and. Church is not just audible, but it's visual. But in some places, church, you even get your sense of smell involved in church too, because they come with the incense. And they, they, they burn the incense in the church, so, so your sense of smell can get involved too. And incense burning, like Zechariah, remember Zechariah and Elizabeth? The incense burning represents, it represents prayers and praise going up to the Lord. It's like a visual representation of the prayers going up to the Lord, right? And so, and these, 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 these elements were very, very valuable. They're very valuable. And so they come to Mary and Joseph and they give them these gifts, right? But on the way back, they're told by the Lord not to go to Herod, go a different way. And so, so they escape going past Herod to tell them where the child is because Herod wants to kill the child. And what happens is now that Herod, he, he's going to get angry now. He's going to be mad at these guys. He can't do anything to them, though. He's going to be angry, and he's going to declare, he's going to go there, and he's going to kill every child two years old and younger. Which is a horrible thing. You know, emphasize, right? It's, it's horrible. I'm going to kill all these babies. It's just 
just like they did back in the day Moses was born, when they knew a deliverer was coming. You know, and he just went around killing babies. But of course, Moses' mom hid him and then set him up so he could be picked up and adopted, actually, by um, Pharaoh's daughter. But y'all read that? Amen. 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 So here's, here's what's going on. So the, Jesus is born, and, um, and, and from the day of his birth, the Satan is out to get him. He's out to stop him. He's out to catch him. He's out to kill him. He's out to keep him from being who he is to be. Now remember, he's fully human. So he's susceptible to um, injury. And if someone caught up to him physically, he could die. And so Joseph, my man Joseph, has to keep this from happening. And so the angel of the Lord speaks to Joseph again. See, Joseph don't get much sleep. He doesn't get much sleep because when he goes to bed, the angel of the Lord may just, may knock on his dream and say, hey, I, I need you to do this for me. And so what it says in verse, um, we're going to go down to verse 13. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Now when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt. Stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Herod is trying to kill the child, and since he can't catch up to the child, he don't know who the child is, he's going to go around killing a bunch of babies. Now, as horrible as that sounds, Right? As horrible as that, that is horrible. Yeah. Okay? But in today's society, um, your government, your society says it's okay to kill babies. They call it abortion. They call it women's health. Yeah, it goes in the category of women's health. I'm not being political here. I'm talking about the science of it. The child is a child, is a child. At conception, the child is fully human. When the child's aborted, that human is killed. Okay? All right, we're going to step away from there for now. But here we go. And so Joseph and Mary and the child are safe in Egypt. And guess how they get there? The gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. What the Lord has done through the wise men, through the magi, he's provided provisions for them. Remember, Joseph is a carpenter, right? And he, he's not a wealthy person. He's not a wealthy person, but with the gifts from the Magi, they have enough. They have enough commodity to go where they have to go and to live off of that. All right, you know. And so when when I think of listen, when I think of this pandemic that we're in, and how how um, government offices and, and schools and churches and and, and businesses, you know, if we if this had happened earlier, a couple of decades earlier, if this has happened before we had the internet, before we had um, all these cell phones, before we had a different platform to present things, the schools and the churches and some businesses would be shut down. Some businesses are shut down anyway, yeah. right? But we wouldn't be able to have church like we're having it out. Mm -hmm. They would just say, you know, don't go, stay home. And we would be in a fix. All right? But because of the because of the technology that we have today, because of the timing of the Lord, and I'm not saying God brings on the pandemic, but He prov he, he provided some things for us Amen. before the pandemic came that most of us can can still go on. Amen. Now of course we have some businesses that that require face to face contact and they're suffering even now. And we're praying for them, and we hope they recover. We hope they recover. We've seen a lot of, a lot of businesses, you know, with sign going out of business. You know, a lot of people are closed down. And, but we hope that the businesses that require face-to-face -face contact will recover. And hopefully, with the um, vaccine and and the time and the work of that engineers and, and scientists and doctors are doing, that we'll get through this thing. Praise God. But Joseph is in Egypt. And see, he stays there until he gets word again. Until he gets word again that Herod is dead and those that
that suck the child's life are gone. And from that point, we don't hear about the child Jesus until he's 12 years old, talking to the elders, talking to the elders in the temple. And then after that, we don't hear about Jesus again until he starts preaching. So from the baby to the little toddler to age 12 to age 30, when he goes forth in his ministry. So we don't get the childhood of Jesus. We don't get that. And we, we asked these questions before. We wonder how it would be like growing up with Jesus, having Jesus in your neighborhood, and, and those kind of things. We, we wondered about those things. But he was fully human. And so I think in the wisdom of God, he kept that stuff away from us. That his childhood. Because imagine you telling your child, you need to be like this Jesus. Is he what Jesus did in the Bible? That would be too much for your children. Right? That would be too much for us growing up. Because right? we, we're natural born sinners. We're born in sin. We're shaped in iniquity. Our parents were sinners. Even mama was a sinner. And Nana was a sinner. And, and those great women and men and women of God, they were all sinners, y'all. Right? And somebody said right now saying, don't call my mother a sinner. <laughs> My mother, a woman of God. Yeah, but your mother had to be saved just like the rest of us. Amen. She was a natural born sinner. And we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there's none righteous, no, not one. Nobody's righteous. The only one born without sin was this Jesus. Amen. Even his mama is a sinner. And had to be saved. Okay? So here's what we're saying. We say all this, we're putting all these stories together, and all these things happened, and all these lives were affected, right? So that Christ could come into the world. So that Christ could come into the world and do the work of providing salvation for you and me and anyone who believes. For by grace are we saved through faith, right? And so all this was done for us. And, and the time and the years and the generations of preparations, 42, that means 42 generations between David and Jesus, right? All the generations, all the promises, all the prophecies from Genesis on through to Malachi, all the prophecies about Christ. And all the time, you see, here's the thing that gets me God's not restricted to time and space like you and I are. We're restricted. You know, we can only be in one place at one time, and time goes on, and we have to dredge through the time. And the living God doesn't have to do that. He can say something in Genesis and doesn't have to bring it to pass until it happens in our time or past our time in Revelations. Because he's not restricted. All right? And all this is done with what I want you to understand is that from the beginning of time, from the foundations of the world, your salvation was prepared. The Lord has prepared salvation for us. He had the plan, and he didn't just make the plan up as he went. He had this all scheduled, all set time and, and uh, events. He had it all set up for us to receive the Christ and receive the salvation that he's granted us. Amen. So this Jesus boy, you know, sweet little baby boy laying in the manger. Remember that? Okay. He has to grow up. He has to develop. He has to get, he has to learn. He has to be schooled. He has to be taught. He has to be disciplined. When I say discipline, I don't know if he misbehave to have to be disciplined, but discipline is teaching. Okay? Discipline is not always correction, it's teaching. Right? He had to be disciplined. He had to submit himself to his, to his earthly parents, to his mother, and to Joseph. He had to submit himself. Right? And then, and then as a man, he had to get a job. He had to get a job. He had to learn a skill. He was a carpenter. He had to learn a skill. He had to, he had to do all the things that you and I have to do. And you know, and everything. All the functions of the human body that you and I have, he had to. All right? He had to eat, he had to sleep, 
He had to eliminate, he had to do all those things that you and I do. Because he's a real man. Do you want to say? Fully human. The man Christ. No, the only mediator between God and man is the man Christ Jesus. Why is he our mediator? Because he's fully human and fully divine. He's the one, he's the go-between, he's the one that knows everything about both parties. And he's the one that brings reconciliation between us and the Lord. And he's actually given us that ministry too, the ministry of reconciliation. He's the only one who can do that. Right? And so, what we're saying is that religion is not enough. A creed and a belief system and practices and rituals and all these things are not enough. Right? The faith that is enough is faith in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ. He died for our sins. And he was risen again on the third day. And he's written, all power is given unto him. And again, the scripture says that, that he being in the form of God, thought it not robbery or something to grasp the equal of God, but made in himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. We said this before. He's the only one that came here on his own. He's the only one that volunteered to show up. He's the only one that made the decision, I'm going to be like that. I'm going to be like these people. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to be like these people. I'm going to be fully human. And I'm going to provide this salvation for them. He's the only one that made that decision. He's the only one that could. The rest of us just happened by a miracle of life and science and the blessings of God. You know, we were conceived and we were able to come into the world. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus is the only one that made the decision to come. All right? And so, because of all he's done, and the life he lived, and the miracles, and the teaching, and the work, and, and, the, and everything he's done, right? And all the signs, and the wonders, and the healings, and the raising of the dead, and, and, and the work, and the, you know, the catching, feeding a, a stadium full of people with a little boy's lunch. All that stuff is so cool. But you know what? It doesn't matter if he had not died for us. Amen. If he had not gone to the cross, it wouldn't matter that he healed people. It wouldn't matter that he raised the dead. It would not matter that he cast out devils, that he walked on water and calmed the sea. None of that stuff would matter if he had not died for us. Amen. If he had not, if it had not been for the cross, the virgin birth would have mattered either. None of that stuff would matter if he had not gone to the cross for you and me. But he did that. He laid down his life. I have power to lay down my life. I have power to take it back up. He laid down his life for you and me and everybody. He laid down his life for all those people that reject him. For all souls that are going to say, I don't want it. For all those folks that do not believe that Jesus is the Christ. He gave his life for them. He didn't do it just for the church, just for the folks who are going to say yes. He did it for everybody. John the Baptist called him the Lamb of God, or God's Lamb, that takes away the sins of the world. Right? He did it for you and me and for everybody else. He did it for all the Muslims, he did it for all the Buddhists, he did it for all the Jews, he did it for all the everybody's. Right? But only those who trust in him, who come to faith in Jesus Christ, are going to receive the salvation. Amen. That's the only ones. Mm -hmm. See, people want to say it's narrow. It's not narrow. It's available to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's available to everybody, but the way to get in is just one way. Mm -hmm. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? This is not one of those things where it doesn't matter what religion you have, but they all come together. You know, it's like a big mountain. Everybody starts at one side of the mountain. Everybody meets at the top. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Only 
only those who come to faith in Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know what that means? Whosoever do not believe in him shall perish, but will not have everlasting life. Alright? So, church, we need to have a sense of urgency. We need to be praying more or different. We need to be talking something. We need to be sharing. We need to be telling our testimony. We need to let folks know that Jesus is the Christ. We need to come to a place in our lives where it's important that we share this gospel. We're told to go to all the world, all right, and preach the gospel to every creature, all right, to everybody. It's our position. It's not a suggestion. It's a commission. It's a commandment. It's what the boss told us to do. If he's our boss, he's our king. And this is what we have to do. This is why we're doing this broadcast. This is why we, we witness one-on-one. You know how the pandemic spread? The pandemic spread one-to-one. One one. Somebody got it. And somebody passed it on to someone else. And went throughout the country and out the world. That's, the, that's the, how the gospel's supposed to go. One-to-one. Right. One. I have it. I need to give it to someone. I, I can't give you the salvation. But I can give you the message. Mm-hmm. And we need to spread the gospel just like that, one to one. You know, I have it, I have the information, and I'm in contact with you. And if I'm in contact with you, you should have the information too. Mm-hmm. If I'm in contact with you and you don't have the gospel information, I'm not doing my job. I'm not doing right. Mm-hmm. My God. So, anyhow, all oh, this Jesus, you know, we just celebrated Christmas, and see, I have an issue. Well, well, my, actually, I don't have an issue. My family has an issue. You see, I could play, I could play Christmas music all year long. And I think that's why I got created earbuds and stuff like that. So I could listen to my music without these other people saying, you're ruining for us. <laughs> but, anyhow, but what we're saying is this. Jesus came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen? Amen? And that's us. We were lost. We were lost. The physician comes to those who are sick. Now I understand your doctors don't make house calls anymore. <laughs> this a generation ago, doctors came to your house, yes. right? And I thank God, my favorite pediatrician has come to my house to see about my kids. You know, actually, it was a day like this, snow on the ground, everything. I remember that day. <laughs> Praise God. But. Doctors don't go to your house anymore, but Jesus is the physician that makes house calls. Yes. Wow. Yes. And he came to our house, he came to see about us, and he came to see what he could do for us, and what he could do for us is provide salvation. But it's like it's like medicine. If yes. doctor prescribes medicine, you don't take it, what good is it? Yes. Jesus prescribes salvation for us, and we have to receive it. Receive the salvation. Peter told the folks in the day of Pentecost, he says, save yourself from this perverse generation. In other words, receive what I'm talking to, what I'm saying to you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And that's what we're saying today. Believe on Jesus. Receive the salvation. It's yours for the asking. God has provided everything we need us to be saved today. Saved from what, Pastor? Saved from sin? Saved from judgment? Saved from regrets and guilty conscience? Saved from habitual habits? Saved from depression? Saved from the hurts and the pains that people have put on us? Right? And saved from our own bad mistakes? He's, He's able to save you from all that stuff. And one day, He'll even save us from the presence of sin. Just for the asking. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And everlasting life starts today for you if you say yes, Lord. If you 
come to faith in Jesus Christ. Instance, if you believe the gospel, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and if you believe that God has raised him from the dead, and if you believe that he's alive evermore, then it's just a matter of saying, Lord, come to my life. I need to be saved. I trust you. Save you. For by grace are you saved through faith. The just shall live by faith. We live by faith, y'all. And you, if you don't have it, you can have it today. If you trust Jesus, just say yes, Lord. Come into my life, Lord. Save me now. In Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for that. We thank God for you. We're gonna and we're gonna go and, and do our communion on next week. We're gonna postpone it till next week. Praise God. Don't worry, it's okay. It's not how often you do it. It's not not the schedule. Remember, they that worship the Lord must worship in spirit and truth. So not on worship is not a scheduled thing. Okay, so we can do communion next week. We'll be okay. Amen. Because we worship in the spirit and truth, and not on camera. Praise God. But listen, we I want to pray with you today. God to do some things for you. We want you to we want you to have a good day. One day at a time, 365 of them. We want you to we want you to be well. We want you we want you to live long and prosper. Yeah, we want you to be okay in Christ Jesus. Amen. But you have to we have to give ourselves to Him to receive all that He has for us. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Lord, on behalf of the hearers today, and those who would come to you, those who would say, yes, Lord. We pray for them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you draw all the hearers by your spirit, that you would draw them like you drew us, and that they would have a mind to say, yes, Lord come to faith in Jesus Christ. And for the men and women, children who say yes to you, Lord, we understand that they become yours, you become theirs, and they become yours. And you provided this great salvation for them. And you give them right standing with the living God. And sins are forgiven. And grace is abounded towards them. We understand, Lord, that you have benefits of healing and salvation and deliverance for your people. And we pray for them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you do it for them. Father, we pray for the men and women and children whose lives are affected by this pandemic. We continue to call upon your name, Lord, because we, we see this thing and we can't do much about it, but our eyes are upon you because you can do what we cannot do. On behalf of the doctors and the scientists and the engineers and the workers and those who are, are, are working towards a remedy for this thing, Lord, give them strength and give them hope and show them what to do with God, that young people might be delivered from this thing. And we pray, Father, that we, the Christian community, will remember what you said in your word, that if your people, which are called by your name, will humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, that you will hear us and you will heal the way. As we repent, Lord, we ask that you heal the land. Not just the land, but the other lands too. In the name of Jesus, do these things for us, Father. And we thank you. We thank you for letting us see a new year. We thank you for letting us see a new day. And we are so grateful for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We trust. We hope. We want you to have a blessed new year and a blessed every day. Amen. And we trust God for all these things on your behalf. We ask you to come. Um, we need to be in a 
Bible teaching church community. We love you to be with us. If you can't be with the Living Water Church, you need to find a church where they teach the Word of God. We're not talking about places where they just talk about all kinds of social things. You know, there's social issues, we understand that, but the Bible needs to be taught to the people of God. Christian man, Christian woman, Christian child, you need to be taught the Word of God. Amen. That's where our strength is, that's where our comfort is, and that's where the wisdom is. We need to go into the Word and learn, and we encourage you to do that. We thank you again. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. And please try to stay safe as much as possible. Thank you. On behalf of our pastors, Theodore and Linda Faison, we would like to thank you for joining the Living Water Christian Center Church for our Sunday morning virtual service. Although the physical doors of our church may be closed, our ministry is committed to spreading the gospel message and staying connected with you as we shelter in place. To support our ministry with your tithes and offerings, you can use PayPal at Living Water CCC, Cash App at Living H2O Church, or Zelle at 973-902-9933. If you need any assistance or would like to send any prayer requests, you can contact us at 973-902-9933 or livingwater374 at gmail.com. We are also available via direct message at any of our social media platforms. Follow us at Living Water H2O Church on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to stay updated on our virtual worship services, Sunday school classes, prayer meetings, and Bible studies. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Be blessed and stay safe.